JD, oh, JD, welcome, welcome to my hangout, sir. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, uh, so happy, happy to have you. I got to tell you though, I'm a little, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. So if you have like a twenty dollar bill or something, I could hold um, while we do this interview. It would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Ah, uh, don't know. Pretty no, broke. Okay. So. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot because you know it worked. It worked for Shan. Money, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, I wasn't gonna bring that up. I actually have it on my notes. I'm like, don't bring up money. Everybody else is gonna bring up money. Um, although it's in my day, we, in my day, we would have said Jordan. That's that's what we would have said. <laughs> Uh, that's how old I am. Um, so I actually have a quick question about um, the advantages. I hope you can clear up. Now, I know you can't steal someone's advantage. I can't go into your bag and grab it. I can't take it and throw it into the ocean. Um, it, but when you have give, when you let someone hold it, is that the same as giving it to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as it's out of your possession and into somebody else's, unless the advantage says non-transferable, mm -hmm. it's theirs. And that was another thing. I told, I told Shan that when I got the advantage, I mean, when I, when I did the ship's wheel, I told her at the bottom, I was like, it says non-transferable. Like it's non-transferable. Like you, you can't vote me out with it and, and still have it. I told her that. Um, I thought it would take away the incentive to vote me out with the extra vote. Unfortunately, that didn't make air when I said that. And Shan was smart enough to be like, it's got to say non-transferable on here, you know? So, yeah. yeah. The, the, the legalities of how these things work. Um, so, so last night, it, it felt like before Tribal that, that they were on board with getting rid of Genie, and then it felt like the mood changed. Um, did you feel any of that? Did you sense any, any uh, change in the, in the mood around camp? I, I, really, I really didn't. I kind of knew it was me the whole time. I'm sitting there trying to convince Genie that it's her, but I'm, that's why I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's me, Genie. And originally, gosh, I, I, I wanted to work with Jeannie to vote out Ricard but Jeannie didn't seem like she was down for that and so that's when I had to go to Shan and I had to try to convince her like that's why I'm also a little nervous when you see me talking to her because mm -hmm. I thought Jeannie had told Shan my plan and that's why Shan was getting paranoid and so I was like no no I'm not like here's proof I'm not here's my vote so yeah any thought to uh roll in the die last night not roll in the die yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was, you know, like, I think rolling the die is worth it when it's a completely, like, everybody against you type of deal. Mm -hmm. But I won't lie, it was up in the air if I would have done a little more work. And so I, I didn't want to roll my shot in the dark because I lose a vo vote. And I could be potentially screwing over someone who was trying to work with me. Okay. So. Now you, you're working with Ricard and Shan out there. And I feel like they're almost like opposite sides of the same coin where Ricard, Jeannie voted for him and he keeps bringing it up. It's like, let it go and you can work with yeah. her easier. Whereas Shan, I feel like is bringing everybody in. She's everybody's friend, everybody's like big sister, things like that. Could you, could you compare and contrast what you're seeing from those two players? Yeah, so while I was out on the island, I know a lot of people think that Ricard was running the show, but like at the beginning, he wasn't. Brad wanted Ricard out. I wanted Ricard out at the beginning, and so did Jeannie. That was our original plan before Tribal, was to vote out Ricard. What we didn't realize was Shan was protecting Ricard. Mm -hmm. And Shan, yeah. kept it, you know, Shan kept the heat off. And so, yeah, a lot of us didn't trust Ricard, but all of us trusted Shan. And so as Shan's number one, Ricard was staying. And so, yeah, like, Ricard is really smart guy, really strategic, a really, he's, he's a, he's a good guy. Um, oh, sure. and then, and then Shan is just, she just had, she's so incredible, dude. Like she had <laughs> all, she had everybody granted after, after Sarah's vote out, I did not want to work with them anymore, mm -hmm. but I had no choice because everybody else was like, Oh, Shan, the great Shan, <laughs> you know, we were all like, we were all her puppets. You know, and I was like, let's cut the strings. Nobody wanted to cut the strings. Now, I, we t used to go out before COVID, go out and do pregame interviews with the cast. And when I, right. it, to a person, it's like, are you afraid to go out there and lie and slit throats and blah, blah, blah. And everybody's like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be the worst. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there. I don't care who it is. I'll, I'll slit their throats. And then you meet these people and you learn yeah. about them and you grow to care about them. So when, sh like, you, you know, you're, you've been, a, like, Survivor's been on since before you were born. 
Um, so you probably went out there like, I don't care. It's a game, blah, blah, blah. But you got close to Shan. So when she betrayed you and voted you out, were you able to, did that hurt? Or were you able to, to say, well, it's part of the game? Uh, I mean, that absolutely hurt. Like, I, I cannot sit here and lie and say that that move is not incredible. That move is so good. It's such a good move. However, it's a move at my expense. You know what I mean? So, like, we're not going to be best friends afterwards. But I respect, I respect you as a player. We're not, we're not going to go get a beer or anything. You know what I mean? And so that, that's kind of that's how I feel about it. Um, as far as emotion in the game, like you said, with the pregame interviews, like, I went I, in my interviews, I was like, I'm going to cut everybody's throat. I don't care. And then I think the hardest person for me to try and cut was Shan, which I, I don't want to keep complimenting Shan, but she just <laughs> I'm not, like she was playing so well, you know. Um, do you hear her theme song in your in your in your dreams? Like I do. when you, you try to close your eyes, it's just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, she would actually hum on the island. And she was humming her theme song. I thought it was the Looney Tunes like theme song for a little bit. And I was like, this chick is crazy. Like I literally was like, what is why is this chick humming? She would do that a lot. Never caught well, on, but it's so cool. Like that's her, she has her own theme song. And Survivor it's pretty made cool. her, her own theme song. It's sick. Yeah. Um, we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word, a couple words that pop into your head. Uh, let's start off with Jeannie. Hilarious. Okay, let's try Brad. Rigid. Uh, Ricard. Slimy. <laughs> uh, Sarah. Oh, gosh, beautiful. Um, no, that's not my first word. That's not my first word. Too late. Um, you can give me another it, one, but too late. You absolutely said beautiful. And you're not wrong. Oh, gosh, I'm trying to think of like one word that's really good. Like She's pretty resilient. And uh, let's finish it off with Shan conniving <laughs> <laughs> oh and actually you spent some time on uh, excessive advantage island uh so let's try the, the two gentlemen you were with there let's try xander oh. twin okay and uh we'll, we'll finish that off with danny quieter like he's quieter than you you think i mean huge like that's probably <laughs> like the best word he's like he's gigantic okay now, when, while you guys were out there, they just showed you talking about your your, your past histories and things along those lines. Uh, was any kind of strategy discussed that we didn't see? With me, Danny, and Xander? Yeah. So much strategy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was like, we probably did that hike for like maybe three hours, you know? And so, like, we talked strategy that whole time. You know, Danny... Danny kind of less strategy talk, but me and Xander, we were going back and forth, like, and me and Xander had, we had our little alliance, like me and Xander, we became best friends instantly on that island. We were calling ourselves the twin dragons. Um, That's awesome. So like that, like he was, I wanted to play with Xander. I wanted to get out of it and I wanted to play with Xander. And so we, we talked about, hey, come a swap. Let's all name two people who we're with and like come emerge. We can have like an alliance of nine. And so Xander named his two people um danny named his two people i named my two people which were shan and brad and then i i went back to ua and i, I pulled brad and shan aside after i gave that quote unquote terrible lie you know <laughs> which was edited people um it probably wasn't that good but still it wasn't they, ed they edit the show i i that's the first i'm hearing of that yeah yeah that was that was a 15 second conversation and we're done it wasn't like two hours of talking um but yeah, I, I told Shan and Brad, I was like, I went to bat for you guys. Like, I gave you guys options. Keep me around. Like, now, like, we can do stuff with this. And you actually also didn't see on in the second episode um, when Luvu wins that challenge and they have to send people to the trek. They send Evie and Deshaun. Originally, they wanted to send me and Xander, but they weren't allowed to do that. Okay. They just wanted um, to send us back. Do you remember who, who Danny and Xander's people were? They're, they're two? I do. Um, I feel like if you're a fan and you're watching the show, you can like kind of see who their two people were, though. Okay. Um, I, don't even, so, I don't know if I'm, you know. I, I did want to know um, how much, mo we, there was a point where you said, you know, the people on the internet, you're wrong. It's hard to find idols. 
Uh, how much did the Survivor producers pay you to say that? They paid me more money than the winner of the season. Um, they nice. actually doubled it. Yeah, I actually got more money than Tony in Winners at War. Now, that's a hell of, it's, it's that's 100% a hell of, true. I would say any, I would literally say anything for, for the two mil. <laughs> it's 100% true. Like, I looked for days. I looked for days. I had cuts and bruises from, from digging. And, like, we had trees that had, like, spines on them that, like, would cut up your hands. It was so hard to find those idols. It was it was so hard, you know. And and Brad Brad had the niche. He had the eyes for it, so he found it. But yeah, I literally looked so long. Trust me, guys, it's not easy to find idols. Yeah. Now I, I don't want. I hope this doesn't sound condescending because that, that's absolutely not my my intention. Like yeah, you're yeah. A, you're a, you're a young guy, and like I said, Survivor. Like you know, I remember when Survivor premiered. You like to to you, Survivor is like baseball is to me. It's just always been around. Um, right. So getting to to live your dream and maybe it wasn't everything you wanted it to be, but you still, you know, got to do it where most people don't like, did that change you at all? Like, what, what was your takeaway from from your time out there? Yeah, so I think the biggest takeaway was that I was out there, you know, like you get a lot of hate from from people and like people will be like, oh, JD sucks. JD is like the worst player ever. JD can't land a sandbag, which is true. <laughs> Um, but like, I, I'm thinking back and I'm like, I got to touch the sand of Survivor. I got to be in the water on Survivor. I got to poop in the water. I got to, I got to breathe the, the tribal council air. Like it smells like fire. You know, I still have clothes that smell like that campfire. And so like, I got to do this. You know what I mean? Like that's something nobody can take away from me. No matter how much you hate me, no matter how much you love me, like I got to do it. And I'm so honored to have been able to do it but biggest thing i'm taking out of there is that never let fear consume you because fear keeps you from doing things you should and anxiety makes you do things you shouldn't and so that's that's probably the biggest thing i'm taking out of it yeah you know jd anybody who hates you is not watching the show right because you know we should you all have that, that that enthusiasm to like follow our dreams and and and, and have the passion now, i know we're running out of time um but so rod hey. me from world to part i'm sorry what's that I said, dang, that was fast. Anyway, go ahead, Rod. Because we're having such a good time, um, which I am. I don't know about you. Uh, hopefully you are. Um, Love it. Awesome. So Rodney from Worlds Apart is my king of a survivor impressions. And you, my friend, are a close second. So uh, in our closing moments, I would like to know what Wu would say about your performance on Survivor. Man, JD, dude, you... You gave it, you gave it your all. You were like cruising through the path, Sonic the Hedgehog style, like gladly you didn't land on your butt. I don't know. Love you, JD. 10 out of 10, my friend. All right, I know you got a crazy busy day. JD, thank you so much for your time. This was a ton of fun. Thank you so much. A ton of fun, not a ton of fun. A ton of fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. A ton of fun. Have a good day.